that could be a problem. Anyway, greetings in the name of the Most High. Welcome to the Zeph Report. We're going to be talking in a, in a minute here to um, uh, Amelia Duran, who's the founder of Porthole to Justice and other child advocacy groups and does a lot of work um, to help children. And was she was basically doing this work um, before it became popular to do. Let's just put it that way, that it's been a kind of almost like a life's calling for her, you know, just because of what she's been through, her Los Angeles experience, her, you know, growing up, she grew up around Hollywood and the entertainment industry and, and participated in it and saw a lot of things. And, you know, it's kind of a similar story to um, to many of, I guess, escapees <laughs> who got out of the, the, either it's like a prison mental hospital. Um, you know, run by the, the sickest people on, on uh, imaginable. And, um, but after the sausage is made, you get somewhere over the rainbow. You know, in fact, I'm going to see if, you know, I'm going to bring her on right now, see if this works. Uh, Amelia, are you there? I'm here. Wow, you sound great. Okay, it worked. Isn't it wonderful when things work? <laughs> Okay, so I've, I'm, I'm probably not saying everything about you. I want to, you know, start by saying, first of all, welcome. And, uh, it's very, you know, obviously brave of you to, um, to talk to me because I know that, um, you know, the more that you get involved in, especially now, there's a big fight on for, for, for children. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, you have a unique background. I mean, I've only talked to you for like a half an hour and I've known you online and people have known you there and we see the work you do. Uh, but I'm not sure they really understand. You see, what I love about you is that I'm, I'm meeting somebody that you can, you know, <laughs> this may be a bit selfish on my part, but it's sort of like you can confirm my experience. I'm not crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, and um, I, I've actually been a longtime listener of your show. And I want to thank both you and Trish for, for having me on. This is a, This is kind of like... I've been wanting to do this for a very long time, and um, thank you. Oh, no, we, we have to do that. This is, this is going to be, you know, I, I predict it'll be, you know, and you know, there's going to be a lot of changes here. I, I just feel it. You know, I feel this whole change coming over us as, we're, as we as a world are going through change. And, you know, I yes, I should have been talking to you earlier, but now we are and we will be constantly because I want you to be the one that updates us on what's going on. You seem to be on top of what's happening in California these laws they're passing against children, these forced vaccinations, taking children away from their parents. Um, yeah. It's just going crazy. Now, you've moved. You were in, uh, you were in L.A. I mean, you grew up. You were, were you born there? I, I actually was. Mike, was that, that's awesome. I was awesome. born up north in a little town called Cupertino, California. Ah, yes. Apple. <laughs> um, and... And then uh, when I was about five years old, we moved to 20th in Montana ah. to, in Santa Monica. Yep. And um, then uh, from there, we moved to uh, 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 Newberry Park. It's kind of like it's, it's north of L.A., and it's like a suburb um, next to Calabasas and Agura. Mm -hmm. It's kind of on the 101 as you're heading toward that big hill that goes down to Camarillo. Just before that, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And um, I, I've lived there. I've lived in Los Angeles all of my life, pretty much. Um, and uh, what a ride! Is it a good place for children? No. Um, that's too general a question. I'm sorry. That that's you know that if, I'm sure that if, if we're with responsible parents, well, but well, it's, no, it, it's fine. Um, you know. I I moved. I, I relocated recently outside of the state, and I was trying to kind of talk to my friends. And I'm I'm trying to explain to them, you know, look, look at these laws. Look, they just passed SB Senate Bill one three two two, which basically legalizes child prostitution. And uh, well, it legalizes it um, if it's in a hotel room in a car. Or it's a digital transaction in in a home. Um, so, what's what was disturbing for the, this past back in like I think it was December, 
And I was, I was going on my podcast and I'm saying, you know, folks, this, they're toting this as being something that will encourage the children to speak out about, about their pimps. But not only this, we know that 85% of children um, that are in, that are sex trafficked in LA come from the child protective services. Um, so it's not a good place for children. <laughs> what you're, and you're explaining why. Okay. No, and the irony is, I mean, as I'm sure as you know, there's probably like a thousand kids that, that take a bus or drive a car to California every day to to become big stars. Mm-hmm. And, you know, these, these children are very vulnerable. Um, and the city is, you know, basically legalizing pedophilia and they're doing it through a series of bills. Um, they're SB 18, which was introduced in December shortly after SB 1322 passed by, um, Senator Pan, who is a pediatrician and the bill is sponsored by Unilever. I think it's Pepsi or Coke, uh, Eli Lilly pharmaceutical company, um, just a lot of very big corporations. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, this is going to pass. And I have this beautiful, beautiful son whom I love so much, precious. And I just, I, I, I was, I was starting to plot how I was going to get out of there. Yeah, no, I, I know at I can, that point. Yeah, you've, as you do the research, you find out that it's 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 worse than you thought, right? I mean, and then you get confirmation by these bills, and then you tell people about them, and it's amazing how many. People just don't pay attention, or they they don't seem to understand what it means, or they look the other well, way. I, I think they too they tote these bills. Um, you know, they they market them in such a way where you know they only present the fluff. But when you go in and you read these bills and you start to research, sure. it makes you kind of sick to your stomach. Right, and and it makes you sick to your stomach because you, I guess you then know what the hidden agenda is. Like, for example, the child prostitution becomes a gateway to pedophilia. This other thing about, you know, empowering CPS more becomes a gateway to providing children for pedophilia. And worse, I mean, you know, you have also the... Um, the, the you know, <laughs> It's almost like L.A. is completely built around this issue. We were just talking before the show, and it's, you know, I, I we, we, we mentioned the word child sacrifice. And you posted something yesterday that was... Um, very kind of haunting where a guy is saying that, you know, he was asked to sacrifice a child at a, at a party, which see that that's why it had veracity. Nobody would say that unless that was, you know what I mean? No one knows that at a party, what that means, but out there in like in Hollywood and all around the, the party is everything, right? So yeah. that, of course that becomes where the, where it would, would take place that it's disguised as a party, but then it becomes this horrible thing and he chickened out, or he got his conscience back. Tell us what you know. What you know about? I mean, you don't it may not know about child sacrifice, but you understand that, like, it's getting your hands on the children. It's more than just um, the sex trade, right? Well, it's it's um, it's a huge industry that rivals the arms trade and um, pornography business. Wow. Um, you know, there's no way of calculating a, a, an exact number, but I, I would say, you know, I've heard figures thrown around like it's a hundred and fifty billion dollar industry, um, and you know, people think, oh my god, it's so shocking, but this has actually been around for a very, very long time, and it's a well-oiled machine. Right, because it's four generations and even thousands of years, even millennia. You know, look at the Roman Empire, look at empires of the past, and look, you know, just any, any empire, you know, even like the Aztec Empire or whatever. You have that decadence that comes in. You've got that, you know, the Bible, okay? The Bible's a good source of understanding uh, the child, you know, sex and murder trade. Because, well, you know. You know, you, you mentioned on the show a lot of times you talk about, well, I, I don't, I don't, 
I don't know how to quote passage or I don't, but uh, what comes to mind is what upset Jesus was the corruption in the church regarding the bankers and the money changers. And exactly. we're, we're dealing with basically the same type of people, mm-hmm. I guess you could say. Right. And they, you know, so they've, they've been, you know, the way it was presented to me was like, and then we're going to talk in a minute here about the hazing and the, uh, the bullying that happens to people that, uh, don't want to be a part of it. And this goes down to anybody. This is anybody from walking around, right? They get the treatment that, you know, you will consent to this and you will, you know, if you don't want to participate, you'll look the other way, but you will be a cover. You'll be a, you'll, you'll be blackmailable. Or you're not going to get anywhere, or we'll, or we'll ruin your life. And that, and so, tell us what you know about um, as you found out about that really kind of hardcore reality. What, 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 how did you, how did you cope with that over the years as you were growing up and trying to get along in L.A.? Well, you know, at first I would just ignore it, and I would think, oh, I'm just going through a. a, a a bad patch or a rash of bad luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I would just go about my business, but uh, it got to the point where I had my best friend sleeping on my couch and I was basically having him witness and um, take notes of everything that was occurring. I mean, I can, uh, I'd go to the grocery store and, and there would be, you know, scenarios, people, people just come out of the blue. Yeah. You know, um, just really odd things. Some, I guess what you would explain is like street theater harassment. Yeah, it's you were, you were, you were, you know, stalked and, you know, the people that knew you that you don't know them. And, you know, that's, it just can make you very paranoid, right? I mean. Yeah, but um, I don't know. I just, and there's a, a lot of gossip too and bullying you know, and mm-hmm. I kind of went through, when you grow up in LA, you know, you go through this, you, I think everybody that, that grows up in LA, you kind of go through this phase where you get the headshots and you, mm-hmm. you know, you go to the acting classes or you get involved in the entertainment industry. My mom started me in beauty pageants at a really young age and um, I was in, I, I studied dance for 12 years. Um, so... At a very young age, I would see, you know, I would, I, I did do have some work. I and I, I did actually work on some movie sets. Um, and you know, you just it, it starts to get like a seedy scene because you see a, a desperation in mm-hmm. some people, and um, you know, like you said, you, you you go to these parties and and the parties escalate. And there is just in one room, there's this and another room, you know, there's this kind of activity. And it, it's, you mean se- it's, sex, sex activity. Yeah. And it's just, you know, you're the either, movable, the movable piece is really a movable orgy. <laughs> but it, see what yeah, it is. When, it, and when well, you start to yeah. like not participate and you start walking away. Mm-hmm. You, you get targeted, you get bullied. Exactly. And that is, you know, gang stalking 101. You're in, in you know, now, now, did you, at what age, or, or when, I should say, not at what age, but at when did you um, figure out it was, you know, satanic, Satanism, Luciferianism, you know, that, did you come into understanding the spiritual aspect of it? Hmm. I would have like moments of clarity. Um, but I went through a lot of abuse and through a lot of handlers. I guess you uh, I, 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 I would, I can guarantee it. Having seen your pictures, I can guarantee you had all that <laughs> and, and then some. Yeah. It kind of attracts, you know, somebody once said to me, my old boss said to me, you know, sometimes it's not good to be too pretty, you know, and, and I, it, it does, it, it, it tends to attract, you know, it's kind of not, 
not good. If you're a pretty girl on the loose out there, you know, doing your own thing, and they, you know, you, to them, you'd be a prize target. I'm just telling mm-hmm. you, you would be, you know, a commodity. They'd be coming after you, you know, on that basis. And you'd never be the wiser. You know, in other words, the, the targets are never the wiser, except you did wise up. You did realize yeah, weird I, things were happening, and you had your friend documenting it to, to show you're not crazy, right? I mean, just to, to prove. And then, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I went through a series of, of you know, just – I've been engaged like three times and I never got married because I just, I knew something was going on and I was, you know, it's like shadow boxing. Mm -hmm. Um, You're just, you know, something's not right. It's, you can just, you feel it. And um, I, I, around my thirties, I, I I was raped Mm -hmm. and I I, my brain split in half. Um, it was too much for me to handle. And I, I realized that I had this, I realized that I wasn't in my body for a long time. Um, and I started, I guess, I started like in doing integration and, and doing a lot of self, you know, self, uh, what do you call it? (laughs) I can't think of the word, but I came out of it. I came out of it and I came out really strong and I wanted to know what the hell this was. And I just, uh, you know, it was sort of, it was survival, you know, it's like, and you almost get addicted. You almost have, okay, I came out of it, but then I had like a Stockholm syndrome where, I was actually kind of, okay, I wanted to find out what it was, though, at the same time. I know exactly what, yes, I I just know exactly what you're saying. You're going to act like, maybe even act a little dumb, like you don't know, trying to find out like a detective what exactly it is. Are you saying that you were raped by, was it part of this whole scam this whole you know satanic oh yeah they 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 do they they record you they film you that's right um they it's a series of like humiliation and 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 eventually i guess it's like you know to blackmail you and who are they uh let's just kind of be clear here for people out there that are you know kind of waking up to all this names no 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 i don't mean i don't mean names but they in well, quotes. Was a, my, my, this no it name. was my. It was it was my ex, and and he worked for the studios. His dad right. worked for the studios. Exactly, he, generational. Yeah. See, those are generational handlers and controllers, gang stalkers, and they're assigned. I'm, I'm I know this very well because I've been through this since you know I became aware when I was a teenager and I was fighting them. You know, you'd be proud of me. I was fighting them off as best mm-hmm. I could. But I, you know, eventually lost, you know, I mean, eventually was incarcerated. But, um, you know, the, 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 the whole thing is, is that it's, it's this vast network of, of people. And, and when you mention people that the guy at the studio and he you know, did this or that, that, they don't have to be these elite positions. It's like there's this spider web of them. And, and you know, it, the elites may be at the top, but then it flows out. To just like people at the studio, people at the police department, people in the Department of Justice, people, you know what I mean? It's just people. Yeah, I think the people that we, that you see, you know, just because I think actually the people, some of the people behind the scenes that, you know, are involved in the unions, um, Mm -hmm. they, you know, some of transportation, some of them have, uh, you know, set building, you know, people that are more powerful in the studios that the some of the board members you know those i think actually those people have more power Mm -hmm. well you know what you're describing and what i've you know tried to describe is this network that's organized and it, it it spans the globe i mean you get kind of like los angeles in a way is a good laboratory to study it to see what exactly it is it's very interesting to me, Amelia. You 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 uh, you wanted to find out what was happening, so you 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 made them think you had Stockholm syndrome. I don't think you. Well, 
you know, you might have, but basically you were being nice to them and you're playing ball a little bit because you're, you got a big question, right? You're trying to find out what exactly, how does this thing uh, operate, right? I mean, that's what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I started trying to fight back. Oh, yes. That's, so what happened then? I got targeted harder. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and how did you... Uh, okay, well, I know that what they did, they, they took your child and they, they made life really hard for you. But what, what do you mean when you say fought back? Was it just resistance or did you... No, Pro- prosecute I started them. researching the law, and I started um, filing lawsuits. Oh, my God. Fantastic. Well, I'm proud of you. That's wonderful. And, and so what was their response? I won. I won one lawsuit um, against um, a sexual harassment lawsuit. Shortly after that, I gave birth to my son, and um, when he was about eight months old, I was uh, at home cooking dinner, and the police came to my door. I was um, having a glass of wine, and mm-hmm. my son was asleep. And uh, they basically, you know, they arrested me. So uh, they accused me of abusing drugs and alcohol. Uh, they incarcerated me, and CPS took my son. Oh. And um, I was in the county jail, and I was thinking, okay, I'm going to be released on my own recognizance. You know, I, I let them, I test for them, um, and I figured when the test results come back, I'll just be released, and I'll get my son, and we'll go home. That never happened. I, I actually was transferred to the Bob Wiley Women's Detention Center for um, five days. Um, I was released at midnight in my pajamas, a dead cell phone. Um, and I, I basically like with no transportation a ride from a, a really nice couple. Yeah, I know that, and that Wiley center, that's, is that, in, it's out it's in the way, w- out, way out there way out in the country. Yeah. Okay. Way out in the middle of nowhere. And I don't know if you remember a while back, there was this woman in Malibu that actually got released from jail and she was murdered because they didn't, you know, she was, I think she was at like a bus bus stop or something. And the police did that to her and there was a huge lawsuit, Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, God's been good to me. How did you get your son back? Well, you know, (laughs) my test results came back negative for, any legal or illegal drugs and there was no evidence. So there was no case against me. Um, but however, um, when I went to court to try to get my son out of CPS, the judge decided that, um, you know, he said, yes, you have all this evidence and, um, you know, there's no charges against you, but I'm going to substantiate your case and order an investigation because I just think you've been getting lucky. Oh God! So he's in, in a, he's he's in on the fix. Yeah. So um, my son was in foster care for two and a half years. Oh God! And I finished. I completed two and a half family case plans, which. Um, involves um, psychological evaluations. Um, I did um, drug testing uh, twice a week randomly for two and a half years. Um, just uh, they they demanded that I joined AA, which was I I felt like it was like a cult in itself, and they were mm-hmm. just like trying to like suck me in, and I'm like yeah. no and. I fought it, and I told the judge, you know, this is against my First Amendment rights. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I just didn't – AA was really creepy. I That's kind of like – I feel like it's kind of a gateway to that whole, like, CD, um, Satanism yep. sure. thing. The, the, and and, and um, there's just – there was something creepy. Yeah, no, I've been through that where, the, where they were, you know – definitely coming after me from AA and, and I went through, you know, dealing with it and I, I had to not, um, 
it was part of a, of a church that we were trying to attend and and then the AA people were part of it and they were all kind of, you know, together in this AA church, whatever. And it was a complete, you know, it's out there. It's in, it's in Studio City. So it was like a, uh, you know, a gateway to the, basically the Satanism, Luciferianism and the whole thing we're talking about, the, the keys to gang stalking, um, sexual trafficking, sex trafficking, slaves. You know, all, all not only that, but, I felt like during my case, because I had this investigation going on, there was actually people in L- in AA that were trying to create drama yeah. to, you know, sabotage my case. It just felt very contrived. Mm-hmm. Well, they try to get you to confess all your sins, so they have that on you, and then they use that against you in an opportune moment. Uh, same thing with churches. They do the same thing. They want you to confess all your sins, tell me all your sins, tell me all your what you've done, you know, come clean before the Lord, and the Lord will forgive you, but you have to you have to confess your sins. It says right here in the Bible, and they get you to do that in AA with your testimony or in the church. And then it's like, and I've seen this happen. And then, you know, if you've done some really bad things, things that need to be kept in secret, that's what they're looking for because then they kind of own you at that point. Yeah. And I didn't really, I didn't really play that, play that game. You know, I, at this, at this point, I, I had become very seasoned, uh, at, you know, and I had like a hyper awareness. Mm hmm. It's just a really amazing world that you've, you know, that you're, and then, and then, you know, after you did finally get your son back after two and a half years and, and going to court and, and fighting and fighting, uh, when did you start the, um, your child advocacy? Uh, was it your son that inspired you to start uh, becoming an advocate for children or how, yeah, how, you know, how did that happen? Well, when my case, when my, my case started and my son was, you know, basically, he was taken illegally under fraudulent circumstances that were completely contrived. So I was calling the FBI and the FBI says, we don't, we don't get involved in CPS investigations. And then I was writing to media outlets and it was, I was completely stonewalled. Mm -hmm. So, um, I started, I started a private group on Facebook, very small. And I, um, started recruiting bloggers and, you know, alternative journalists um, and radio show hosts and TV show hosts. I had like two TV show hosts and um, it's, it's, a, it's about a hundred, a hundred people mm-hmm. and talented, you know, hosts like yourself. And I'm a huge fan of talk radio. <laughs> you know, it's, it's been a force for good, you know. Well, thank God for talk radio, right? Yeah, all my life. I've really enjoyed, you know, I, I used to listen to Coast to Coast, and then I stopped listening to Coast to Coast, and then I started listening to Dennis Prager and Michael mm-hmm. Savage. Mm-hmm. And so I created this group called the Children's Coalition of Advocacy, and I started using it. I started collecting cases on Facebook. And I would just throw them into this group and, and um, people like Fletcher Long and um, William Wagner, mm-hmm. um, Fletcher Long of the Fletcher Long Show and William Wagner of On Second Thought. He has a TV show in Santa Barbara. Um, they started uh, they started featuring these stories. And uh, when my case closed, I started the porthole to justice. And I went public. And, um, it, it's, I've, I think I have like almost 3000 members now and I've reunited 12 families. Um, and I data mine, uh, corruption within the child protective services. Mm-hmm. That's outstanding. Yeah, and you have a, a radio show as well, right? I mean, you, you broadcast as Porthole to Justice. I know that I've, I've heard you. I mean, sometimes you do live Facebook, sometimes, is there an organized, you know, a time or a show that people can go to and and tune in? Um, I I used to be on the Donnie D's Words of Wisdom every Saturday evening um, <clears throat> at nine o'clock, mm-hmm. but I since have started uh, my own speaker. 
inspired by yours truly. Okay, we have to we have to get over there right now, folks. You guys listening, tuning in at this hour, and God bless you for all being concerned citizens are, are the only people awake at this hour. But please go uh, get involved and and you know like and you know whatever you have to do with Spreaker to become a part of. Uh, and it's called Porthole to Justice on Spreaker. Yeah, I call, I named the show Porthole to Justice, the window to the truth. And um, I feature uh, corruption, I you know, cases where there's indictments um, within the Child Protective Services. Um, it's become a sort of protective empire mm-hmm. and a magnet uh, for pedophiles. So, you know, consequently... I'm I'm never lacking uh, content. <laughs> you're getting you're getting people attacking you then on the show. Is that what's happening? No, no. Um, no. Most, okay. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, there's always there's, there's always, always that. Always. <laughs> 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 yeah. Sure. Um, n- I I interview. You know, when I when I do reunite families. I will feature their case on the show after they're reunited and their case is closed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I will also uh, talk about um, uh, bills that are passing. And, um, I, you know, I do a lot of research because I, it's kind of become like a passion of mine. You know, once, once you know all this stuff, you can't unknow mm-hmm. what you, you know, what you know. And um, so God put it on my heart and I just, uh, you know, I, I, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a testimony. Yeah, no, you were called. I mean, you're, you're the protector of children and you were called into this very, very vibrant, valuable, you know, I mean, this is like the, the, the number one thing we're supposed to be doing is protecting our, our children and you're on point on this and that's why I think you know it's it's you've been very courageous in your own personal fight and in you know and you know I don't think they would have taken I mean this is a speculation on my part but I don't I don't think they would you would have had the trouble with your son had you been like kind of playing ball with them that of you know the circumstances of your your birth and you growing up there and being around the entertainment industry and I know how they are they're trying to recruit 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 people to the uh, to the dark side and you wouldn't go there and so then all of a sudden you have all these circumstances that are very negative but what you've been describing you know unfair treatment you know un- unfair uh, arrest uh, trumped up charges um, this is uh, this is persecution you know you, you, this is you were persecuted but then that led to something even greater which is your decision to be an advocate for children and then going public I mean this is phenomenal well, and, and that's something I, you know, I want to, I became, I did, I could have laid down and died. I could have, um, you know, but I got a distinct message, get louder, yes. get bolder. It's counterintuitive, isn't it? But it, but it does work. <laughs> it, it's the right thing to do. You know, it, it's so odd, but I prayed to God and I was like, this is crazy. I'm, you know, and I'm this ex, you know, I'm this introvert, extrovert type of person, um, just by the nature of my, you know, environment growing up, you know, it was, mm-hmm. I would, I would go out, I, you know, and I'd perform or I'd, I, you know, do whatever. And then I would come back inside myself and I always wanted to be a painter or an artist, you know, my mom would be like, what? Mm-hmm. You can't make money doing that. <laughs> yeah, the, you had the stage. Um, you had the stage bomb syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I understand. I'm just, I'm just really thrilled to be talking to you about Los Angeles. We're talking with uh, Amelia Duran of uh, Porthole to Justice and uh, her child children's advocacy group. What, what's the name of that again? And can they get involved in that? Um, is, is that well? That's a that's a private group. Okay. That okay. I, members of the alternative media. I see. And that's a, yeah, I'll drop stories into that group. I see. Okay. So that's, but, but they can get involved on Spreaker at Porthole to Justice on Spreaker. So go ahead and do that because she's going to be presenting as time goes on bigger and bigger things. I mean, you're right in kind of ground zero of, of, and we're going to start talking about the, the, the recent uh, Pedogate things now. Uh, I think, you know, you're, you're right there on the cutting edge of, of what's going on with that. 
So how do you think, um, from your perspective, and you've been at this long before this topic had become mainstream, so w- w- how do you think we're doing as a nation? As I mean, obviously, California, is, we're not doing very well. But there's all these arrests of these pedophiles and child traffickers. How do you think we're doing? Are we doing better? I, I actually do think that the awareness is growing and, and it is getting better. Um, there, I, I'm, I'm noticing a lot more indictments and a lot of people waking up and... You know, it's a hard topic. It's not, you know, this isn't, it's it's not something you discuss in polite, you know, society. <laughs> right, so here, here we have uh, the, the, the big problem with society in the world and our civilization, which is the, the child trafficking and, and, and use for all kinds of nefarious things. Okay, so this has been the unspoken thing for thousands of years. If you resist it, i.e., you know, giving consent to it, they gang stalk you. They try to ruin your life, trump up charges, throw you, you know, wrongfully in jail or whatever to try to neutralize you because you're not going to play ball. And this runs the world, right? I mean, this is what we've been. Can you believe this? What we're, what we're, I mean, what you've come to that same conclusion I've come to on your own, completely independent of any kind of influence. And it's just mind boggling to me. How are we going to solve this? Well, I've been. I've been doing this for seven years almost. Mm -hmm. And um, you start to see patterns, you know, and you start to recognize uh, handlers, sometimes uh, agent provocateurs. They pose as advocates, but they're very divisive in your groups. And, Mm -hmm. you know, they try to split up your group or they, they slander you. They attack your character. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. you know, it's. It, what did you make of that woman that uh, she was an attorney that had a case and then this assassin guy just gunned her down in broad daylight. He goes to jail. We'd never hear another thing about it. What, what do you, what's your, do you remember that case? That, yeah, I do. And I reported it in the porthole to justice and it, and it's been a, a while, but you know, it's so sad, but um, I think this year, uh, 2016 and, and 2017, I think we had something like seven reporters, and then uh, we had uh, reporters like Ben Swan get taken off of yeah, the air. Yeah, that was amazing. Um, amazing. Yeah, and, um, you know, from K Rock, Dr. Drew, you know, he's been around forever. Yeah, he's been a staple, and he got taken off right after that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so it's it, this is a I mean you're talking about the levers of you're you're actually we're actually talking about the thing that actually unfortunately you know it's so backwards but we're actually getting a glimpse of what makes the world work. Yeah, and um, I think it's so wonderful that we're keeping the conversation going, and um, people are uh, actually talking about it because. Mm-hmm. But there's also a lot of there's a lot of victims out there that their their innate instinct is to close their eyes to the issue. Of course, and that's that's where we have to kind of gap and uh, to to really cross over. And uh, well, there's been not, there's been a number of reporters on this too, though that that have really helped. I mean, what do you think of the young? These are kind of young reporters, and they're twenty somethings, and they're all really not afraid to deal with this. Don't you? I think that's a positive sign, right, for the future. I do, and I think it's awesome. You know, um, you have uh, you have like Milo Yiannopoulos, um, mm-hmm. who I think is is very dynamic, uh, awesome public speaker, um, and you can see the pattern of these takedowns of these really uh, sort of, you know, blossoming uh, public speakers, public people, personas, sort of at the the very beginning stages. And you can really see the the targeting. They're willing to go to civil war. You can actually watch the targeting. And and you can watch the targeting on our president. (laughs) <laughs> it, no, he's being gang stalked. It, it's classic. What well, they're doing everything. They're doing gaslighting, right? They're doing, um, you know, false witness. 
They're doing uh, trumped up charges. You know, they're doing all the same things. Uh, All the same things that you and I have gone through. Yeah. You can literally watch the president go through this. Yeah. Um, there's another reporter that I want to mention, David Seaman. He's doing, a, he, you know, oh. he is so brave. He's very he brave. Such a young good man. job. Yeah, I love, I love him. I, I love all the people involved and, in, you know, that have, that have, you know, said something. And I'm, you know, the Pettibone sisters are out there on point on this. There's, you know, just you know, young women, uh, you know, that are that are very dynamic. They're they're published authors, I guess, at this point, and you know, they're going to be voices out there in the future. You know, the young, like I say, the twenty somethings now, when they get in their thirties, they're really going to be, uh, hopefully, will be a change off this controlled pedophile media, <laughs> this this pedogate, this sort of uh, pizza gate media, and there'll be a change over to. Um, you know, to reality at some point, because we can't, look, we can't just keep going with this corruption, this level of it. And, you know, isn't it interesting, here's another interesting, I, I drew this, this last time was occurring to me, which was caused me a lack of sleep, but I'm drawing an inference between, and, you know, uh, the uh, nuclear uh, situation we're in right now, and the corruption that we're living in. It's almost like, Oh, God, it's a horrible revelation to think about. But, I mean, I'm always thinking that if the corruption is so bad it can't be fixed and then there's this specter of nuclear war, which would ultimately be the ultimate uh, failure of our society, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Because it would kill everybody. So, so th that's one way of getting rid of the problem. Is it so bad, Amelia, that it can't be fixed or is, it, is there hope? I think there's hope. And, you know, we're witnessing even, you know, it's getting to the point where mainstream media can't even ignore this anymore. And I think we, we're all a little bit safer because even Dr. Phil is reporting on Pizzagate. You know, he's not calling it Pizzagate. Right. But, you know, he's having these, these um, victims on his show. Mm -hmm. And that's huge. Yay. And you know what? I found that we've got a, 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 a people that I might have thought, oh, they're part of the system, whenever suddenly becoming friends. And that's a good that's a good feeling when you start recognizing, hey, I have a whole bunch of friends I didn't know I had. You know what I mean? We, we're stronger together, obviously, not to take a Hillary Clinton statement, but we're stronger mm -hmm. with with numbers. Right. I mean, there's the more of us are out there. We start seeing people more in the mainstream. And then you had in Infowars, too. You've got uh, that young reporter there. uh Owen Scheuer is on top of this. Millie Weaver. Yeah, but what, she's, what's his name? Philip Joseph Watson? Yeah, Paul Joseph Watson. Then you have Millie Weaver who went out to L.A. to do this whole study, you know, a whole series of reports on, you know, how uh, Satanism, it, you know, plays in with the child trafficking, you know, and, and she went to the Philosophical Research Center. Remember that place up on, oh, God, that's a creepy place. That's uh, Manly P. Hall, and that's the... Um, you know, he was the, the greatest uh, writer about Freemasonry, and she was trying to get into that library and draw connections mm -hmm. between that and those secret societies there and uh, pedophilia, which, mm -hmm. and then the Getty Center was tied in. You know what I mean? This, this high-level stuff. I'm like, wow, that is incredible. How old is that? that she's like 20, I don't know, everyone's 25 to me. <laughs> but, but she's, you know, she's a, a uh, just a, a young, dynamic uh, I've never seen anything like this. So many of these young people, it's almost like the young people, and, and I consider you in that, in that group too, um, coming forth to, 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 you know, citizen journalists, becoming journalists, becoming, eventually, I think all these journalists will be mainstream, I'm hoping. But there's a big fight right now, Amelia. I mean, we're almost at a civil war here. They send these Antifa people to shut down, you were talking about Milo and, um, Yiannopoulos and and uh, and Coulter and other people in Berkeley, this whole this whole thing that's going on. This, in a sense, these are the forces or the soldiers or the mm -hmm. of of the establishment people of the people that are promoting and continuing this. You know, mainstream media being in the tank with all these people, child trafficking, weapons trafficking, drug trafficking, and these people are are still the ruling class. What do we do? How do you overthrow them? Well, I think um, through information and education uh, and uniting, once, you know, like I said, once we cross over um, and we, we really we really 
penetrate that barrier um, of the people that are in denial or 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 scared, mm -hmm. um, and everybody unites. I, I think that it's just going to, you know, it's just going to be so powerful. Um, you know, nobody. Praise God. <laughs> we we need, Lord, we need your help right now in Jesus' name. We need you to reach right in here. Just strengthen the hand of, of these lamb warriors that are going out there, lambs amongst wolves, and going into these, you know, these, these, these very dangerous situations. Uh, to help the children. I just, it's the right thing. It's, we need that supernatural, miraculous help. And the Lord has been helping. Haven't you noticed a lot of kind of miraculous things, the doors opening and manifestations of, of, that could only be of God exposing all this? Yeah. And I think what was truly, um, united a lot of people was witnessing, uh, the election of Donald Trump. And everything that he went through, and then after that, everybody that was um, sort of on the Trump train, if you will, uh, you know, the the people like Milo, you know, yeah. I want to point out that you know, these attacks are very calculated, and they all are the same. They're, you know, if you if you watch. Um, what they're doing to David Seaman, they're freezing his accounts, they're, uh, they're demonetizing his YouTubes. Um, you'll find the same patterns. Right. Um, you know, we just, I think some of us that sort of been exposed to, to this, um, to, you know, we, we recognize we recognize these things, but I also think that it's becoming uh, more apparent to the masses as well. Yeah, the masses don't want their children. If they, if everyone really knew what was going on, they would be incensed and outraged, and 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 would become advocates too. I mean, it's it's our job to protect our children. It's just this has been a secret thing, Amelia. For you know, back when um, when I was fighting them, you know, it, it seemed like. You know, and they were laughing at me. They said, oh, yeah, you're, you're going to put up a fight. Oh, isn't that cute? You know what I mean? And it was like that kind of attitude, which, which, so it's the whole world. And so it's, it's really the world system of Satan. I mean, ultimately, the world system of Satan and the, the people who participate at the top, you know, they are Satanists. They, that's what they believe in. And, um, it's, it's been entrenched like that for as long as, you know, from, you know, from the beginnings of the Bible, describe it, to, you know, here and there pretty, pretty well. I can see why they want to throw out Christianity and the Bible and everything else, because there's evidence there, too, that this is nothing new, right? Mm -hmm. No, and, you know, you can really also, you can really see uh, within the court system and the Bar Association, uh, the just the whole coup that's occurring um, the corruption is, I think, coming um, to a critical mass. And, oh, I'm um, into that. And I think, uh, you know, we can even, you can even see it just recently. Uh, Trump, you know, his, the cities that are, are uh, becoming sanctuary cities. And mm -hmm. the courts are ruling against our own president. Um, this is a coup. This is a. These are foreign agents, right? It's, it, yeah, the judge is a completely corrupt judge that just tried to. He said you cannot not fund a sanctuary city because they're not following federal law. It's a big contest. It's a big problem. But these, uh, this, this uh, Trump, <laughs> he's had everything thrown at him, including you know the abandonment of a lot of people that were for him in the beginning, and then when they saw things they didn't like. It's okay to point out things you don't like. I don't particularly like, you know, uh, Jeff Sessions going after um, uh, a certain herb, let's say, that's a natural thing, you know what I mean? And, and it's uh, mm -hmm. something that helps people medically like me. And, and so I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not for going to jail because I'm trying to cure a, you know, something that's really wrong. Uh, that that's a natural thing that's a lot, you know, that people use, of course, you know, we can go, we're not going to do a show about this, but I mean, you know, you can, you can say that these, uh, that the, the, the hemp and marijuana and, and what do you want to call it, cannabis has been a real help in getting people off opiates and opioids. 
mm-hmm. and, and, and a number of things, and pain with cancer and sleeplessness and all kinds of things that happen to people, especially as they get older. And um, it's, it's just a, uh, it's a whole realm of medicine, and including with that are all the supplements and you know, the conspiracy against all that. We have that going on. And then we have um, people that are very suspicious about Trump now with neocons. You know, they feel like Paul Wolfowitz is in there again, and and now they're you know he's buddying up with Lindsey Graham and 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 that awful guy John McCain, and 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 now they just want to go to war with everybody, and and now Trump's becoming a warmonger. So there's all that kind of blowback from the original supporters. Me, I'm not doing any of that. I'm just like, I'm looking at it. I'm going, you know, I understand what's happening here, but I can't explain it. It's almost like he's having to be like you, 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 when you were, when you were, um, kind of, it's not Stockholm syndrome, but he's having to work with people that are probably detestable to him to try to get something done. I'm not going to be an advocate for things that I, I'm not going to start in on, you know, the things he's doing wrong. I'm just saying the things he's gone through to get where he is and the gang stalking that's happening and the being set up by, um, you know, the CIA, the NSA and all that, all this, this terrible uh, fight and the guy is still going. That's truly remarkable, right? It, you know, it's definitely impressive, and I think that he came in very strong with a lot of good intentions, and, and that's something similar that we see in the beginning of every presidency. And unfortunately, yep. the the corruption is 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 just been it's so deep rooted. Uh, it's like a an, a plant that's just so overgrown in a pot, and the roots are coming out the side, and they're being exposed. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very deep, and and um, it's a force. Yeah, that, and I, it, 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 I, I don't think he, he or any of us knew what he was facing, and and now they're they're accusing him of you know filling the swamp. It's like no, you've you, you know. Did you ever see the movie um, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington? You remember that great classic, the Jimmy Stewart classic? Any one out there? Did you see that movie? Um, well, you know, it might be interesting to go back and watch that movie now because it's about a guy like Trump, you know, a pure-hearted guy that just wants to go fix things, go into Washington, and it shows what happens to him, and it's very similar. <laughs> that's that's why that that I'm glad they made. I guess it was Frank Capra that made that movie, but it was very it's very similar, you know, in, in a sense to what happens. He goes in with all these good intentions, and then look at look at the look at the roiling mess there is there. So I wouldn't be too down on him, folks. I mean, I'm I'm praying for the right thing to happen. I'm praying constantly for the president and for the good people to prevail because we, ha- if we don't prevail, I mean, let's say it had been the other way, the deep state and all that, you know, that we'd already be probably cooked in a, a nuclear war. Only this time, instead of what I what I think is going to happen with the nuclear tensions right now, is I just believe that somehow there's going to there's going to be a some kind of resolution that's going to be leave the world in a better place than it was before this all started. The other side wanted to go full on nuclear with Russia, and that's it. We do have saber rattling, had that having been said, on all sides. So while we're talking about child trafficking and the pedo gate thing, it's been a little bit overshadowed by geopolitical events, especially of you know nuclear war that's got people's attention right now. But may I just draw this inference? I believe that one kind of like produces the other. In other words, this pedo gate thing was huge, is huge. And it's leading to these elite names. And isn't it interesting how all of a sudden we deflect into the most serious of all war situations, the total annihilation of all humanity in a nuclear war? Is it funny how we... Remember, I used to say this on the show. I said, would they go nuclear to cover this thing up? Well, I think um, you know. First, first, uh, we have to to realize that you know we we can only sell guns one time. We can only sell drugs one time. Um, people can be sold over and over again. Right. So you have to consider that you. This is the the human trafficking has become pretty much the backbone of our economy, which is, which is really sad. And yeah, people, they don't realize there's more slavery today 
I mean, you know, there's people out there that are that are advocates of this. Of, you know, when we when we have that once a month, but you know, it's it's uh, the human slavery aspect uh, across the board is is many many magnitudes more than it was in in days where we think about slavery and slave trade. There's you know women being sold for you know ten dollars. Uh, Yazidi Christian women. Right now, I just read this article. They're being sold for, you know, uh, it's just, it's, it's horrifying. Right out on the streets, right out in the middle of the streets of, of cities you could go to. And, uh, there's nothing you can do about it. It's, it's, it's in your face. And it, it, it's, it, it, it's now been exposed, but it just seems to me like they're, they're just doubling down on it in certain areas of the world. In other words, okay, it's, it's, it's exposed. They're doing it right out in the open. Right on the open. Yeah, and they're really, they're, you know, instead of, you know, um, sort of pushing back, they're trying to uh, slip in these bills to legalize it. Yep. Kind of like before the before it hits them, it'll be under the color of law so no one can do anything. Well, what makes, yeah. let, let me ask you, it's a character issue, you know, with these people. What makes a person want to hurt a child? That's the... How, where, how did they get to that point? Is it because they were hurt as children and they want to become an abuser? What do you think? Um, yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it's sad, but the, it's... And, and also, too, I think when you get in these sort of establishment rings, it's sort of like an accepted thing, and they all support each other. They they support each other's campaigns. They, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, get it honest, it's, man. It's an incestuous thing, and or um, yeah, what's the word that I'm looking for? And sort of nepotism. It's just a like fa- you would see. Yeah, they join in the movie business. In the movie business, mm-hmm. you know, it's who you, they say it's who you know, but actually, it's who you're related to because obviously they're going to hire somebody within their family. You know, so there, it's so joining them, joining them uh, is like joining them is like joining a family, right? If if you if you become you know indoctrinated into their, if you're really beaten down and you're humiliated and you, and you don't have that strong connection to the creator, yes, yeah, you know it becomes very alluring uh, because it's like a way out where you had nothing, you had nothing, and now here's a way. Oh, God. Well, I can tell you this. Once you hit about 50 years old, uh, th- there is no way. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's, so it's kind of, I tell people, they say, well, you know, I, there are people, uh, I know a few of you out there who are like 49, right? And that's, that's, uh, you know who you are. And you're worried about, you know, that the big five O is coming. And it's like, oh my God, now, now I'm going to be, you know, it, how's that going to be? And I chime in, I go, guess what? It gets better after 49, okay? And one of the reasons is, you, you're going to notice, you, some of you have gang-stalking issues, and it's just, your, I don't know your personal circumstances, but you're struggling against the very same thing we've been talking about. Okay, that diminishes in time, uh, believe it or not. I don't know why that is, but that's something that people don't talk about, but that does diminish and it may be that as you get older, you get wiser, you get stronger in the Lord. For, that's another thing that happens that gives you more peace. And you just, you know, maybe it's in my case, it, yes, it's out there. You know, I mean, there was not that long ago I was poisoned, and, you know, and, and, and was a death door. I mean, really, if it wasn't for some intervening prayer warriors, I, I was dying in the sun in July in 2010 and just about got there. I went into a death rattle and I was convulsing and, and it was actually, uh, and people did it. I mean, I, I don't want to go into the names or anything else. I don't want to. I, 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 it's, it's just such a sordid thing. But I did survive it, and I did survive because of prayer. I guess what I had on the phone, and I need to get him back on here. I had Mike Horsey on the phone, at uh, because we were going to do an interview, and I happened to be out in Los Angeles, so we were going to do an interview, and um, you know we had to cancel, and so he did a powerful prayer over me at that point. And that was the turning point where I actually beat the poison. And, and I, I'm a fulfillment of Mark, the, the chapter in Mark that talks about um, no poison will affect you. I don't recommend going out and drinking poison, but, and, and uh, Trish was also affected. It, was, it, it took us um, about six months to recover. 
And it was a very serious thing. But we kept it quiet back then. We didn't have a testimony about we couldn't because this was a very fluid situation. You know what I mean? Our lives were very much hanging in the balance because there's a component here in New Mexico that was sabotaging the truck along with the, you know, it was all coordinated. You know what I mean? And it was just like, Mm -hmm. it was a hit, you know, and and, and it failed. And so, but since that time, since 2010, now that's seven years. It seems that it's it's been there. This tension, this war thing, has been there, but it hasn't been. It's been different, you know. As I've gotten older, and I think there's two reasons for that. One, you're you're not such a target. I don't think they think you're as much of a, a threat as you were when you were younger. Because we have an ageism, we have a society based on ageism, for one thing. And that's mm-hmm. fine. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying what's it, what all you people who are in your 60s, you all know what I'm saying, right? Okay, so uh, we have that. And then we also have um, th- this idea that you, you become stronger in the Lord, your faith becomes stronger. And that tends to then keep that back. You know, you walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by, by our strong connection to the Lord constantly in prayer. And it was prayer that, that made me live. I couldn't go to the doctor because, see, if I went to the doctor, it's like another co- coordinate. It could have been another someone else in on it, too. See, so it's like, oh, man, Amelia, it's terrible, all this stuff. And, uh, you know, and I, I remember being out there when the, the, there was that hit on Ronnie Chasen. Remember her, the uh, the famous agent or whatever? She was a manager agent. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she was turning left. Well, it just happened that you know right there where she was turning left off sunset on Whittier was a shortcut and it's so scary because you know you know that 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 there, it's a total cover-up yeah, it was just such a hit the guy was like from he, he know where he was from he was from you know Santa Monica Boulevard way down by you know Vermont okay so somehow he decided to drive his bike all the way from there and you know where that is how far away that is from Sunset Boulevard Beverly Hills so he drove his bike all the way there and was just waiting, and then he just decided to go out in the middle of the street, which is across two lanes, at 12.30 at night, and, uh, and she was in her Mercedes turning left on that, you know, that, uh, that busy street on Whittier, which is kind of a shortcut for people to get down to Wilshire. And uh, he just walks over on Sunset, where he could, could, cars could have gotten by, you know, and he shoots her there, and then she makes the left turn and then crashes into a, a light pole, which fall, topples over, and and he doesn't rob her. And this kind of like it is like these people that these situations are used as examples, right? And it sends like shockwaves through the community. Yeah, what did she do wrong, right? And then her whole family. This was very similar to like you know Michael Hastings and and others and Breitbart. Her whole family then played ball, and they were all like, yeah, there's nothing to see here. Then they got John Walsh involved. You know, John Walsh, the, the America's Most Wanted. He got involved in it, and, you know, and the Beverly Hills Police Department, which, of course, there, there's, there's nothing you can't buy down there. That's, they're all for sale down there. And, you know, so basically, they, they said there's nothing to see here. Well, you know what? Recently, like with about... Six, eight months ago, I saw they were reopening the case because they, they now believe there is foul play. Well, yeah, and they do that. And the courts, you know, this is part of the whole the whole uh, thing is the courts kind of operate secretly. Mm-hmm. And we see, like... Mm-hmm. We see snippets of televised, you know, just on the news. But I think what they do is they air it so many, so many months later that people just don't pay attention. And the judges in California are just kind of ignoring the law, you know. Well, certainly. We're supposed to be a nation based on the rule of law. And I know that that's sort of an idealistic, um, we, we don't have that. We, we don't have that. We have the corruption. Judges, right. They should follow the law, but they, they don't. And in California, the judges and the justices per, pretty much do whatever yeah. personally pleases them. It's well, a tyranny. It's, a, um, it's the problem we face, and I guess the question is, are we, are, do, can we turn it around, Amelia? Is there still time? Or is it, you know, are we past the point of no return? I don't want to think that, but... Uh, 
we have like things like uh, you know Judicial Watch. I um, like them. There's a lot of people that are sort of forming their own set of kind of watchdog, mm-hmm. you know, watchdog groups, and I I think that we're starting to see people like Karen Bass uh, in in uh, you know locally. We're, mm-hmm. we're slowly starting to see the tide turn and 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 justice ginsburg even mentioned the pendulum you know the pendulum swings back and forth it's and it's thank god for that <laughs> it's been it's been like the last 15 years though has been just uh you know it's been really a tough fight and uh, you know it's it's like these these entrenched people they're they're not going to give up their little fiefdoms very easily you know what i mean they're going to they're going to fight you yeah yeah i wa- i wanted to know if i could just mention briefly a couple bullet points about Go california ahead. yeah please the you know we recently uh harvey levin of tmz he came on tmz and he mentioned you know how there was 50 women that were uh, in Washington, D.C. that went missing in this very small time frame. And I wish he would, you know, report more. Um, I think they shut it, him down, didn't they? I mean, they, they got to him, too, because he, he got famous for that. And then all of a sudden he was silent. I mean, he yeah, was, I mean, I, I was, he was excited, famous. Like, but, oh, my gosh, he's talking about, he's talking yeah. about. And, um, you know, we have approximately 800 children missing in uh, foster children missing in the state of California. Uh, you can go on to uh, missing, uh, missing. There's a website, uh, missing, uh, missing persons file or it's LA.org. And there's a there's like. Third, this is really thirty three thousand seven hundred and six missing children under the age of eighteen, documented since two thousand sixteen, on the NCIC. Mm-hmm. And what's kind of disturbing to me: some of these children don't have photos, and some of them are listed as runaways, and they're only like two years old. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. See, that's the thing we face is this um, this terrible, terrible trafficking of these of infants, you know, and it, it's it, it, it it's very depressing. But we've got to go on. Well, Amelia, let me let me get um, all the uh, info. We they can't go to that. That's there's you have a closed group, which is really interesting because you stuff you report stuff out of there. But they can go to Spreaker and join up with. Um, hook up with the porthole to justice right to get your next yeah i'm on i'm on spreaker i'm on twitter and i'm on instagram now okay please follow her on twitter uh twitter's easy instagram's easy instagram you know it's weird they haven't been i i don't i it's they keep changing the program but okay uh if um what was i gonna say I just, I, I just I drew a blank. I, we'll go over. Oh, oh I, I got a question. I got a question I for you. I want to mention okay. people in California think they're in the clear. They think that SB 18 didn't pass. And what they're doing is they're, they're splitting the bill up and they're slipping it into SCR 44, SCR 41, and they're dividing it and redistributing it to sneak it through. So I want to encourage anybody that's tuning in to, that is uh, living in California um, to be vigilant. I love the matter-of-fact nature of this show today. How I've, I've never talked to you before, you know, literally just talked to you, but, I mean, I've, I've watched you videos and heard your broadcast. So it's just so amazing that we're talking and kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, sort of like casual about something that just a few years ago you'd be thrown in a mental hospital if you mentioned it. <laughs> it cracks me up. Anyway, so, so you can, you can, but, but it's true. I mean, it's true. We, we, you know, because of the likes of people like David Seaman, Paul Joseph Watson, Alex Jones, uh, 
and those reporters there, others, the Pettibone sisters, and and you, Amelia, and you know some of the more celebrity types like Harvey Levin and Doctor Phil, and 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 all that, um, and more and more and more. This is going to become, you, you know, do <laughs> I have some questions that I'm going to be putting out to you, the audience, after um, Amelia? But I want what I want to make sure is that you know you know where she is. She's on. Okay, Twitter. Oh, oh. When do you broadcast? So, is there a schedule, or do you just broadcast when you need to? Or how, I've or? just been, you know. Sometimes, if I get if I get a parent that reaches out to me, or there's a story, I'll just get on Spreaker and I'll start uh, podcasting. If yes. you if you subscribe to my Spreaker, you'll get notifications. Um, I have no set time now. That I love that. I love that's the way to go. Is hit hit when the iron's hot. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love having that, that freedom. Um, I miss doing, I miss doing my shows on the Donnie D's words of wisdom. Um, you know, but who knows? I, I may if, return. If I owned a radio station right now, I know exactly who I would hire. <laughs> I have, I, right. I have, I have covered 24 seven. I should have a radio station and go 24 seven. You know what I mean? If there's a way to hook it up, uh, maybe, uh, you know, this is something to think about. It's possible to put together, you know, because everyone can be in their own home now with the streaming, right? And, and all can be part of a network. But can you imagine like a, like a powerhouse network that would just deal with this stuff, Amelia? Just, you know, every, every, every host deals with the same stuff and you have a call in number and you have a board, you know, where they could patch you in and, you know, uh, it's convenient. I, I know. You know. I, I actually have conceived it, and um, you know, it, it and it is a goal. <laughs> Let's do something like that. You know, this is this would be wonderful. I mean, you know, you you've you know the we don't need people to patch anyone in. I mean, now with you know with with Skype, you can do multiple callers can call in and stuff. But still, there's something about having a board and somebody at the board. So when the calls come in, then they patch it through. So that you're free to just do the show, right? Everyone has their job they do. And then, um, you know, I, I, would there be sponsors interested? Uh, I'll bet you there would be. I, I can name a couple right now. Um, there was that armor company that, uh, the, the, the water filter, filtration companies and some of these, you know, you know, places that sell food for survival, you know, to start with. Cool and, security company. Sure, sure. There's, there's uh, so many, um, you know, yeah. there's a lot of people I think that would be interested. Yeah, I just think it would be very successful at this point right now, you know, just like when Roger Ailes had Fox News and was going completely against the tide with conservative news and the sea of the, the, the liberal. You got to understand something, too, about liberal and conservative. Liberal and conservative, is, these are false terms. There's establishment, ruling class, serving that. And then there's this, you know, serving the people, let's say. And it's been called conservative or liberal, but the, the, the terms don't help us at all. Well, Amelia Durant. You no, know, and I, I think that they use they use those sort of terms to kind of box us in yep. and to label us, and it makes sure. it easier to target us. You know, I. So they really they really want you to identify with like a, you know a label, and I'm sort of an anti-label. You know, I would love to have you also in on uh, the twenty on twenty too, because you're you're working the same side of the street as us. So Please, I would be so honored. You know, everybody has to kind of wait. There, you got to jump in like it's a, like an Italian family. You know, everybody <laughs> says a million things at the dinner table, and you want to get your say. You know, you have to jump in. And Charles has gotten good at that. Uh, Patrick's got good in that. But I think you would be a, a great uh, addition to that. Um, and then you'd have Trish there. That we'd have quite a group, I think. But you're out there doing the very thing we're talking about, the very thing that we're what we have a ministry for, is what you're well, doing. You know, so I've, it makes sense. I, I don't know. I don't know if you know this, but I've been promoting Twenty on Twenty for a couple of years now. <laughs> so you're like the long lost family member. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, so this twentieth, I want if if you're willing, I'm just gonna make I that. I actually it. told Trish, I said I found my soul family. <laughs> right, so I want to invite you now publicly. Invite you to uh, you can of course reject or accept or not say, but I, I'm seeing you're accepting. So come on on the twentieth with us and the and the twentieth shows because I notice you've been promoting it, and I'm like I'm I guess I'm just dense. I've you know I um. 
I tend to, I haven't really organized my show and I've just kind of gone with it, you know, just kind of gone with the leading of the spirit. Now it seems to be going into a new phase of more of an organ and, and here you are. So I'm, I'm really excited. This is a great show to, have, you know, start off this sort of new leg of the journey with. And Amelia, I'm going to go ahead and um, let you go now and invite you to come back on 20 on 20 for the whole duration, whichever, however long that goes. And uh, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And I also want to thank Trish. Uh, she does a great job as well. And, she does? Um, yeah. <laughs> Don't tell her that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I thank you for that. Uh, she's been... Um, Without her, I don't think you'd be hearing much from me. So, uh, you know, yes, uh, yes, uh, you know, God is good. Uh, you know, Amelia, the story, one day I'll tell you that story about how Trish and I met. But now that I look back on it, I can see the Lord's hand because here we are, two of the very same people, you know, just like if meeting you. You know, it's the same people running into each other in this sea of sharks, and here we are, and 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 boy, oh boy, did they hate it when we got together. I can tell you that. I can tell you they've been trying to bust us up ever since. Um, anyway, God bless you, sister Amelia, and thank you so much, folks. Go over to Spreaker, check her out. Thank you. Thank and you. God bless. God bless, and bye bye. <laughs>